In this lesson, you will learn about the sensors and weapons of the longbow. First, you will learn the different sensors and how to use them to find and engage targets. Then, you will learn about all the weapons available and how to use them to destroy your targets. Ready? Okay. Start the engines and take off. Hover at 200 feet. Secondary target in sight. First, we shall look at the sensor packages. There are three primary sensors available to you. The first and most important are your eyes. Since the weapon systems will follow your head movements, looking around your aircraft for targets can be instantly gratifying. Secondary target in sight. Press the F4 key. You can now move your head around and engage targets. You can move your head using the joystick and the Alt key. Press the Y key. Press the Y key. Secondary target in sight. Enemy armor, you are 9 o'clock. Now you are looking at the TADS target, which is a friendly. Use your eyes often. It is the easiest way to engage and destroy close threats. To return to the front cockpit view, hit F1 key. The second sensor package is your TADS. The Longbow is a dual position aircraft with the co-pilot gunner, or CPG, taking care of target acquisition and classification, and the pilot doing the flying and the killing. Secondary target in sight. The CPG takes care of all target location for you, and you can watch in the TADS MFD. If you won't, you can take over the TADS control by using your cursor control in the TADS MFD. By pressing the cursor control on the edges of the MFD, you can pan and tilt the package. By pressing on the zoom indicator, you can zoom in and out on the targets. Secondary target in sight. By pressing on the sensor indicator, you can cycle through the DTV, the DVO, and the flare. Though you can control these sensors, it is better to let the CPG do it. The TADS is also used to laser designate targets for laser hellfires and other laser guided weapons. The TADS range is about 6 kilometers and it can see up to 110 degrees to each side. The third sensor package available to you is the Westinghouse Millimeter Wave Longbow Fire Control Radar or FCR. Secondary target in sight. It can search for, track, and identify both ground and air targets up to 20 kilometers away. The FCR is also used to illuminate targets for engagement with RF Hellfires. The FCR has two modes. Ground mode looks ahead of the aircraft in a 90 degree arc. Air mode looks 360 degrees for air targets. Secondary target in sight. Enemy armor, you are 9 o'clock. You can switch between these modes using the Page Up key. You can look at the raw returns of the FCR in the FCR MFD. Or you can see the classified targets in the TSD MFD. Look at your TSD. Notice how the friendly target you acquired earlier is highlighted on the TSD. This means that the target is now being illuminated by the FCR. Secondary target in sight. You can use the cursor control to select other targets on the TSD. Simply put the cursor over the target and click to select it. The symbols on the TSD tell what kind of vehicle the targets are. The symbols that look like H's are tanks. The round symbols are wheeled vehicles. The triangles are artillery. And the square symbols are buildings. The lightness or darkness of the symbol indicates how big the target is. For example, a Russian-made T-80 tank will show up as a bright H. Be warned, there is no distinction between friendly and enemy forces on the TSD. For this, you need to know your mission route and where you can and cannot fire. To engage something with your weapons, you must make it your target. There are two types of targets for the sensor system. 
First, there is your TADS target. This is from a list of targets that your CPG creates while searching the area for hostiles. You can use this list in three ways. To engage the target your CPG feels is the most important, hit the ALT-T key. This may be your primary objective, the closest ground threat or the closest tank to kill. It will always be an enemy. To engage the next enemy in the CPG target list, hit the T key. To go back in the list, hit the Shift T key. You use these keys to cycle through all enemy targets. To cycle through friendly targets, use the Y key. Tad's targets can be engaged with rockets, laser hellfires, stingers, and the chain gun. If the FCR is slaved to the TADs, then you can engage with RF Hellfires also. The second type of target is the FCR target. The target that is currently being illuminated by the FCR will be displayed in either the FCR or TSD displays. If the TADs is slaved to the FCR, you can see the target in the TADs window. FCR targeting is used to engage with the RF Hellfires. To choose FCR targets, use your cursor control on the TSD display. The current target has a diamond around the symbol. You can choose multiple targets or double click to clear the target list. You can always tell where your target is by looking at the eye hands. The field of regard box shows where the target is in relation to the field of view of the tabs. If the target is in your view area, then a dashed cross will appear on it. To choose between FCR or TADS acquisition of targets, use the Home key. You can check which mode you are in by looking at the weapon page. Changing acquisition modes is useful to keep a target locked in one mode while searching for other targets via an MFD in the other mode. Okay, let's go have some fun. Fly to waypoint one. The weapon we will use is the 30mm chain gun automatic cannon. It is useful against infantry, trucks, and other soft targets. As you get towards waypoint 1, your CPG will start to pick up targets near the waypoint. Since the range of the chain gun is under a kilometer, hold your fire until the range is under 1.0 kilometers. When you have a target in range, fire. section of the i hats reach less than one kilometer fire the chain gun. Fly towards your CPG's target. Some more targets, and when you are done, slide to waypoint two. Good shot, sir. Huh. 
hot damn. Engaging with cannon. Good shot, sir. You start each mission with 1,200 rounds in your cannon. Engaging with cannon. Hot damn. To check how many are left, look at the weapon display in an MFD. Engaging with cannon. Engaging with cannon. Engaging with cannon. to a hover at waypoint 2. to a hover at waypoint 2. weapon in your arsenal is the 2.75 inch folding fin aerial rocket. These unguided rockets are useful for soft and lightly armored targets like buildings, trucks, and armored support vehicles. The rockets have a range of about 8 kilometers but are useful within about 3 kilometers. The thing to remember when firing the rockets is that they are unguided. The rocket pods can move up and down a little to compensate for range, but you must turn your aircraft directly at the target to fire. Also, since the rocket pods automatically stow at 100 knots, be sure to move slower when engaging with the rockets. To change your active weapon system to rockets, hit the backspace key. When the rocket is active, the weapon field of IHADs will show RKT, and the I-beam rocket cursor will appear. When the target comes into range, which is about three kilometers, start to slow down and line up on the target. Follow the I-beam cursor. As long as you have the cursor over the center of your view, you are lined up on the target. The top and bottom of the cursor represent the limits of the rocket pod rotation. If you are pitched too far or are flying too fast, the cursor will become dashed to indicate you are out of constraints. When you get lined up, fire a rocket.
Come on, line up on the target and fire. Good shot, sir. Threat, your 12 o'clock. Good kill. Sometimes it's easier to hit a target if you increase the amount of rockets that are fired. To change the amount of rockets fired on every shot, use the S key. The available ripple rates are 1, 2, 4, and 8 rockets per shot. All right. You can see which ripple rate you are using by checking the weapon display on an MFD. Hot damn. Pick a target and use the rocket ripple control to select eight rockets. Come on, line up on the target and fire. Line up and fire. Notice it takes a while to fire eight rockets, but what destruction. Hot damn. You can see how many rockets remain by checking the weapon display on any MFD. Good shot, sir. All right. Fly around and test your rocket firing abilities. When done, fly to waypoint three. Fly to waypoint three. Primary target in sight, 12 o'clock. Target in sight, 12 o'clock. Fly to waypoint three. Slow down and hover near the waypoint. The weapon used by the Apache to defend against air targets is the Stinger Infrared Guided Missile. Primary target in sight, 12 o'clock. The Stinger is used by orienting the aircraft so that the seeker head of the missile can acquire the heat source of a target aircraft. When the seeker has acquired, it will emit a shrill tone into the intercom system and you can fire. To help you find and engage air targets, use the Longbow Radar in Air mode using the Page Up as a shortcut, you can switch all your avionics over to aircraft killing in air mode by using the M key. On the radar display, there now are several targets. 
These are target drones used to practice air-to-air -air combat. Use your cursor control to select one. Good. Now, make sure that you have the stingers active. The iHeads display should say APA. There should be a bouncing donut on the iHeads. This donut represents where the seeker head of the missile is looking. To fire the weapon, turn the aircraft towards the target. As you turn, watch how the donut cages to the longbow radar and starts to look in the right area. When you get the launch tone and the donut is solid, launch. The missiles are extremely fast and will take out the target quickly. Stinger away. Stinger away. When you get the launch tone and the donut is solid, launch. Stinger away. Fox 2. Good shot. Use the air radar to select another target and do it again. You might want to close on the target and try your cannon. Stinger away. It can be especially deadly to air targets at close ranges. Engaging with cannon. Mission successful. Good job, sir. All right. When you are done, fly to waypoint four. Stinger away. Fox two. Good shot, sir. Engaging with cannon. Engaging with cannon. When you are done, fly to waypoint four. Enemy armor, 12 o'clock. When you are done, fly to waypoint four. Slow down and hover near the waypoint. Enemy armor ahead. The last weapon on your longbow is the Hellfire missile. The primary design of the longbow is to safely deliver the Hellfire to enemy targets without being detected or engaged by anti-air threats. Hellfire will destroy almost any target, but is used mainly against enemy armor. Killing tanks is what it is all about. Enemy armor, 12 o'clock. There are two ways you can launch a Hellfire at a target. Lock on before launch mode, or L-O-B-L is the easiest. You lock a target, orient your aircraft so the missile can see the target, and fire. 
You keep the target locked until the missile impacts. This is also known as the direct fire method and is used in the direct fire master mode. The other way to launch a missile is lock on after launch, or LOAL. Enemy armor front. In this mode, you use the fire control radar and the tactical situation display to get a picture of the target area. On the TSD, you select the target using the cursor and fire the weapon. You don't have to have the target locked to fire. The missile will leave your aircraft and loft up towards the target. While the missile is in the air, though, you must re-illuminate the target because the missile needs the radar reflections off the target for terminal homing. Enemy armor, 12 o'clock. If you do not re-illuminate the target, the missile will miss. The missile countdown timer on the iHAT tells you how much time you have until missile impact. All right. LOAL is also known as indirect fire launch mode and is used in the indirect fire master mode. You can tell which missile launch mode is active by looking at the iHabs. The missile constraint box for LOBL mode is small, but it is very large for LOAL launches. Enemy armor front. You can also check the weapon page on an MFD to see which mode you are in. You can change the missile launch mode using the insert key. Firing Hellfire. Alternatively, changing master modes from direct fire to indirect fire will switch the missile launch modes. The AGM-114B laser-guided Hellfire missile is no longer the main weapon for armor killing, but you should still know how to use it. Hot damn! Enemy armor ahead. The laser-guided missile is LOBL only, and you must keep the target locked during the entire flight of the missile. You can laser designate another target during the missile's flight, but if the missile is too far along the flight path, it might not be able to turn in time. This missile was great in Desert Storm, killing hundreds of enemy tanks and vehicles. The new AGM-114K Hellfire II missile is now the weapon of choice for killing tanks. Good shot, sir. The Seeker head is guided by the FCR to attack illuminated targets. Hellfire away. It can also be sent to an area to await illumination of a target by the aircraft. Okay, let's use one of these puppies. To warm up the system for a Hellfire, switch weapons until MSL appears in your eye halves. Hot damn! Switch yourself to direct fire master mode using the M key. Enemy armor ahead. Now look at your TSD. Move your cursor to select a close armored vehicle. A diamond will appear around his symbol. Now, orient your aircraft so that the missile constraint box is at the center of your eye hatch and the box is solid. When you hear the tone, you have a lock and the missile can see the target. Fire when ready. Hellfire away. With a missile in the air, you must keep in view of the target so the radar can continue to paint it. If you lose contact with the target, the missile will continue on the path it was on and most likely will miss the target. Hot damn. That was easy, right? Now let's try to kill multiple targets. It's really easy. Use your cursor control on the TSD to select three targets by shift clicking on them. Make sure the targets are close together so that you don't have to whip the aircraft around to fire the next missile. When you have the target selected, point towards the first one and you get a lock. When you hear the tone, fire. Enemy armor front. Good. Since you have multiple targets, the FCR will automatically pick the next target. Now, get a lock on the second target and fire. Now, get a lock on the second target and fire. Enemy armor front. Missile away. Continue until you have fired on all targets. While you are firing, the first missiles are in flight. The countdown timer on the IHADS tracks the oldest missile fired, then switches to the next missile when the target is destroyed. Good shot, sir. Enemy armor ahead.
Easy, right? Point and click death from above. Good shot, sir. All right. Except it's not so easy out on the battlefield with people shooting back. Enemy armor ahead. Engaging targets directly is the simplest way to eliminate them, but also the most dangerous. When you are firing, and while the missile is in flight, your aircraft is left exposed to the enemy, and whatever air defenses they might have. In order to decrease your exposure and still kill the targets, you must use the indirect lock-on after-launch method of firing Hellfires. Enemy armor, 12 o'clock. To switch to indirect fire mode, hit the M key. The missile constraint box on the IHADS has now become larger, reflecting the larger envelope for LOAL missile shots. Now, use your TSD to designate a target. Point your aircraft so that you are in missile constraints and fire. Missile away. Notice how the missile launches up nice and high after launch. This is so the seeker head can search a wider area for your radar signal. Enemy armor ahead. All right. Seems as easy as a direct shot, right? Good work, soldier. In the next lesson, which is strategy and tactics, you'll learn how to use LOAL launches to strike fear into the hearts of enemy tankers. That concludes this flight lesson. Proceed to waypoint 5 and land the aircraft. Waypoint 5.
land the aircraft. Go into a hover above the landing spot, drop collective and land on the ground. This should be second nature by now. Go into a hover above the landing spot, drop collective and land on the ground. This should be second nature by now. to a hover above the landing spot, drop collective and land on the ground. This should be second nature by now. <laughs> 